Hello everyone. Today in this video, we'll be discussing the fourth module of physics, super important question. And this uh, in this module, we have six super important questions from the previous papers and the model question paper. Don't miss any of these questions. These are the most repeated ones. And before starting, please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. Without wasting more time, let's get started with the first question, which is the difference between the type one and type two superconductors. Okay. So in this module, there is a lot about superconductors and the magnetism, all those things. Okay. So the first uh, question, uh, difference between the type one and type two superconductor. Okay. So the first is both of them exhibit the uh, Meissner effect okay we will discuss what is Meissner effect in the upcoming question but uh, the type 1 will exhibit a complete Meissner effect and type 2 will exhibit partial Meissner effect okay second is these are perfect diamagnetics and these are not perfect diamagnetics these are the soft superconductor these are the hard superconductors they have only one critical field they have two critical fields okay and they undergo a sharp transition from superconducting state to normal state they undergo gradual transition okay this is sharp this is gradual transition transition highest magnetic field is 0 0.1 this is 50 okay so these are the differences and uh, you can remember any five differences so the examples are lead tin mercury and alloys like nbsn and nbti okay these are the uh, used to generate very high magnetic fields okay and this one type one is the applications are very limited okay and moving on to the next question which is explain bcs theory of superconductivity so bcs stands for bardeen copper and scryfer okay bcs in 1957 explain the phenomenon of superconductivity so it explains the phenomenon of superconductivity okay it's a very interesting question based on the formation of copper pairs okay how does a uh, metal become a superconductor okay the journey we'll be discussing now so it is called as bcs theory it is a quantum mechanical concept okay so let's have a look the step by step approach how a metal becomes a superconductor so the first thing is when a current flows in a superconductor electrons come near positive ion core of the lattice okay so there is a lattice and there is a positive ion core so when a current flows all the electrons will come to this point okay after that what happens due to attractive force the ion also gets displaced from its position ion which is there it gets displaced from its position it is called as lattice distortion so the lattice which is there it will be distorted okay ion will be somewhere else then the uh, lattice vibrations are quantized in a term called as phonons okay now an electron which comes near that place will interact with the distorted lattice when an electron interacts with the distorted lattice okay pay attention here when an electron uh, interacts with the distorted lattice at that time it reduces the energy of electron okay so uh, uh, this is the electron this is the distorted lattice so when an electron interacts with this one the energy of uh, uh, electron will get uh, reduced okay it is equivalent to interaction between two electrons through lattice this leads to formation of copper pairs copper pair is nothing but the uh, interaction between two electrons through a lattice okay copper pairs are bound pairs of electrons formed by the interaction of electrons with opposite spin and momentum in a phonon field okay that is what is called copper pairs it is a bonded pair of electrons formed by the interaction between electrons with opposite spin now when the electrons flow in the copper pairs in material they do not convey encounter any scattering and the resistance factor okay so in the copper pairs the resistance factor and the scattering vanishes because of the uh, because there is no resistance it will conduct uh, infinitely so the conductivity becomes infinity which is called as superconductivity you got the point right to summarize what happens first the uh, distortion happens in the lattice electron comes and interacts with the distortion so electrons energy reduces and there will be a copper bond formed when copper pairs will be formed there will be no resistance which will lead to infinite conductivity and they become a superconductor that is called as superconductor activity in superconducting state phonon interaction is stronger than coulomb force the normal interaction is lesser the uh, superconducting interaction is higher because there is no resistance present here okay and also they travel freely without flow down uh, the energy is not transferred they do not process any electrical resistivity okay so the conduction is the highest in superconductors okay Moving on to the next question, we have defined Fermi energy level, discuss the variation of Fermi factor with the temperature and pressure. Okay, we'll discuss what is Fermi energy level and then we'll discuss how Fermi factor varies with temperature and pressure. Okay, it varies with two factors, temperature and pressure. Let's have a look how it varies. Okay, basically what is Fermi energy level? Fermi factor is the probability of occupation of a given energy state by electrons in a medium and thermal equilibrium. Okay, so this is a place where electrons are present and based on the temperature and pressure, how does these electrons behave that is called as the fermi factor okay it is a probability of the occupation in this place how much energy electrons are doing what okay that thing is called as the fermi factor the probability f of e is the given the energy state e is occupied by the electron at temperature t this is the equation which is uh, there and f is the fermi factor now they can depend on the temperature and energy shown uh, based on three factors temperature is zero kelvin and e is less than f 
we'll discuss e equal to f and e is greater than f for e is less than f and the temperature is zero what happens here what happens is the probability occupation of energy state is 100 okay because the value of this e power infinity will be zero and one by one is equal to one so here the occupation of energy is 100 percent when f e, uh, f e when e is less than e of f which is energy of fermi level okay and second one is when e is greater than e f okay temperature is still same it is zero when e is greater than e f it will be zero now let's discuss if it is equal if it is equal to e f at temperature greater than zero kelvin at that time it becomes half okay it becomes half energy is 50 percent okay and this is the graph firstly it will be one then slowly as the temperature comes to this point at the half it will become and then it will become zero when it is greater than e f okay we go to the fourth supplement question we have explained dc and uh, ac Joseph, uh, josephson effects and two applications of superconductivity okay so consider two superconductors separated by insulation barrier of less than 10 to 20 armstrong uh, meter okay so this is superconductor one superconductor two in between it is a separation insulating barrier it is called as josephson uh, junction josephson superconducting quantum uh, tunneling the junction between the two, uh, two super uh, conductors okay now what happens it is an arrangement of two superconductors separating by an insulating barrier okay when the barrier is thin enough if the barrier is thin in that case copper pairs form and the uh, conduction can happen from one superconductor to another superconductor it uh, so josephson proposed three kinds of tunneling which is the first is josephson dc effect uh, ac josephson effect and quantum interference so what is dc josephson's uh, josephson effect in this what happens is the setup is as follows only we will apply steady dc current okay the constant current will apply direct current without any application of voltage between the two superconductors in that case what happens through the junction it passes the uh, current okay and uh, this is the equation which will govern how much current is getting passed in the superconductor okay and uh, second is ac josephson effect in ac josephson effect there is a v potential applied between these two a uh, battery is connected so that ac uh, voltage will be there and the current will be formed and what happens is when v is applied in two sides of junction then a radio frequency rf current oscillation across the junction is generated so here what happens oscillations are generated with radio frequency okay with radio frequency oscillations are generated in ac okay and this is the formula which uh, gives us the calculation of how much alternative current is flowing okay we go to the fifth superconducting question we have described the mistress effect and hence classified superconductors into soft and hard superconductors based on mh graph okay so what is mistress effect we'll understand first so a superconducting material kept in a magnetic field expels the magnetic flux so if this is a superconductor and so suppose if this is a superconductor and this is a magnetic field when it is kept in a magnetic field what happens it will become like this okay it makes a uh, curve around itself okay this effect is called as Meissner effect so it expels the magnetic flux out of its body when it is cooled below the critical temperature so the temperature matters here if it is cooled below the temperature it becomes like that okay dry magnet this effect is called Meissner effect okay and uh, this is the diagrammatic representation this is the normal temperature this is the temperature below the uh, normal temperature so it will be having a uh, conductivity magnetic diamagnetic conductivity so it will be pushing out the flux okay so when temperature is lower to tc the sudden uh, flux suddenly is completely expelled okay as p one becomes superconducting it becomes superconducting so flux is expelled and the equation which governs that is b is equal to nu not h plus m and h is the intensity of the field and m is the magnetization of the field so uh, b is equal to zero if we take uh, this will be equal to zero m will be equal to minus h okay and uh, m by h is equal to minus one that is the perfect diamagnetism in case we, the temperature is lower so superconducting metal do not allow the magnetic flux to in exist inside the material it will what it will do it will expel it okay so what are the effects of magnetic field it can be destroyed by applying a magnetic field the superconductivity which is there it can be destroyed by applying the magnetic field and the strength required to uh, do that is called as critical field uh, below the tc temperature denoted by hct okay so t is the temperature of the superconducting material tc is the critical temperature hc is the critical field so the equation is given this one uh, given as this okay for destroying the superconductivity this is the graph uh, given dependence of hc on t okay we go to the last supplement question we have explained the failure of classic free electron theory and assumptions of quantum electron theory so classic free electron theory failed for three reasons we will discuss that and what are the assumptions of quantum electronic theory 
so why does why did classic free electron theory fail the first reason is specific heat okay specific heat we know that at the uh, constant volume in uh, the specific heat of a gas is 3 by 2 into r but it is uh, experimentally observed that it will be 10 power minus 4 rt which is very lower than the expected value so according to the theory of specific heat independent of the temperature whereas experimentally specific heat is proportional to temperature so uh, the assumption was it was not having any effect on the temperature but temperature actually affects based on the experiments results so first assumption was wrong specific heat is not uh, the right assumption in the classic free electron theory second is temperature dependence on electrical conductivity okay so here uh, how it depends is it was assume that it is dependent by inversely alpha 1 by t okay but with some calculations we'll get to know that it is dependent on 1 by root t not 1 by t okay so that is the second failure where happened temperature dependence on electrical conductivity okay it is inversely proportional to 1 by root t it is not same so it is not agreeing with the theory the third reason is electrical conductivity depends on the electronic concentration more electronic more electron means more conductivity that is also wrong okay we have assumed like that but that is wrong why it is wrong observe the copper and aluminium aluminium's uh, concentration of electrons it is 8.45 into 10 power 28 this is 18 into 10 power 28 so copper is lesser and aluminium is more so based on our assumptions conductivity of this should be lesser and this should be more right but it is reverse this one is more and this one is less so obviously the assumption was wrong for the classic free electron theory now quantum free electron theory here the assumptions are energy is dependent on the quantization level okay allowed energy level uh, is realized in terms of set energy values distribution of electrons allows various energy levels to occur as per Pauli's ex exclusion principle that's why there will be differences because it is according to Pauli's exclusion principle okay and they travel with a constant potential inside the metal but confined within its boundaries and attraction between electrons and lattice ions and the repulsion between the electrons themselves are ignored okay these are the assumptions of the uh, quantum free electron theory okay that's all from the module 4 and don't miss any of these questions please do like and subscribe it helps me make more like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one